Yeah, Frank, just wondering if, if you've had a chance to think about rotation, uh, who's going to be in there tomorrow, and how you guys want to approach it as you get ever closer to the regular season. Yeah, um, you know, continue to grow each day. Uh, the only guy injury-wise that, that will be out uh, for tomorrow's game, or, or I, we should say, I should say doubtful, is uh, Caruso is still doubtful, still has some soreness in his, in his hip flexor. Um, so he'll be listed as doubtful. I do plan on uh, playing AD and LeBron um, some first half minutes, um, but just to kind of get their feet wet. And, um, you know, as of right now, I think everybody else will be available. Frank, what did you see on the film from the first two games? Of what did you like on offense? What did you like on defense? And, of course, the grand salt here is you didn't have uh, some of your key uh, guys, but, of course, you're two stars. But what stood out to you in those two games? Well, we're playing hard. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, it, it, it is still sloppy, but, um, you know, we're playing hard. Uh, the defensive end in particular, you know, there's a lot of room for improvement there. Uh, offensively, I really like the way we um, worked for shot quality, uh, played through Marcus Ole at the high post um, with all the cutting. And, um, you know, his unselfishness I thought was contagious uh, for the group because uh, really everybody else was thinking extra pass. Uh, when they got passes from him. So, um, you know, some good good things on both sides. Hey, hey Frank. Um, two questions. One, are Costas and Devontae back with the team? They are back with the team. They have been cleared uh, from the, uh, the health and safety protocols from the league. Uh, they have been cleared to return, yes. Okay, great. Um, you said, I think, it was before one of these pieces of games, that you wanted your team to, to kind of continue to have sort of try harder mentality, play harder mentality. Um, did you see that in those first two games against the Clippers, that the guys on the court um, tried harder and played harder? Well, I, I wouldn't compare them to what, what the, uh, the other team was doing, but I, I do feel like we played with great effort. And, uh, you know, the effort piece is, is just has to be part of our identity. You know, um, it's a habit that you build throughout the regular season that uh, become second nature and instinctual in, in the playoffs. And, um, you know, we competed at a very high level uh, in those playoff games uh, as a result of that habit we built in the regular season. So uh, that'll be in the intent this year. And, and I do feel like we played with great effort uh, in the first two preseason games. Frank, when something uh, happens in a league like Giannis has to put both signing, Do you like game out how the league landscape can look? Um, is that something that you're you're monitoring when news like that occurs, uh, especially considering you guys are defending champs and he's the back to back defending MVP? Um, you know, I just kind of take it with a grain of salt. You know, obviously it's a, you know, if he ends up signing, it's a it's a great thing uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks uh, to be a to be able to keep a player of that stature. You know. Um, you know, I really just react to, to these moves as they come and, and see how they impact uh, the competitive landscape of, of what we're about to face. Wow. Hey, Frank, um, just touching back on Devontae and Costas, um, is there any context you can give to the nature of the excuse absence from Sunday and kind of going forward? Um, is there factors that um, you know players and staff can control? Uh, you know, procedural or you know, being careful or otherwise that can help reduce um, the number of, of those kinds of absences that you guys might have this year. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's what every team's talking about. You know, we have to have to follow the protocols as closely as possible. You know, that's the only way to um, potentially try to reduce it. But we're, you know, we're at the, uh, at the mercy of the virus and of, of the testing protocols. And, um, you know, I can't really get into any more detail about, uh, you know, what, what happened uh, with this weekend and why they're back so quickly. But, um, you know, definitely uh, following the protocols as, close as closely as we can, uh, you know, in some circumstances could potentially reduce it. Thank you. Uh, Coach, uh, obviously, we got Phoenix for the next two preseason games, and they made some additions with, with Chris.
Chris and and Jay Crowder. What are you seeing when you meet when you look at that look at that unit? And what's the thing you want to accomplish in this first uh, game preseason game with LeBron and AD? Yeah, I mean, I, I think with uh, answering your second question first with LeBron and AD, um, you know, I just want to see them uh, go out and try to get a rhythm, uh, get comfortable with uh, with some of their new teammates. And try to get their legs under them a little bit. You know, uh, we, we've been trying to intentionally every day monitor the amount of work uh, we put on those guys after the, the shortest off season in history. And um, you know, that'll be no different with uh, with these next two preseason games. Uh, you know, in terms of what the Phoenix Suns have done, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, they're a team that's going to be a force in the Western Conference. You know. Um, uh, obviously, Chris Paul is a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know that shows last year that he can uh, still carry the team and dominate. And um, you know, obviously, Devin Booker and Aiton, and uh, you know a lot of the, the rest of the guys they have on their team, um, you know, really showed what they did in the bubble, the way they they finished their season. Uh, I think will probably be a momentum build them, builder for them. And like I said, with the additions that they've made, you know, they're uh, I expect them to be a great team this year. All right, we'll take more. Alan Sliwa. Hey, Coach. Um, I know a lot of the conversation has been about the depth on the team. Can you just talk about how how you balance um, having such a uh, you know lineup you can go 10, 11, 12 deep, and then also <coughs> during the season kind of taking that balance and making sure that guys know their minutes, they know when they're coming in, they know what they're playing with. What's that balance like? Yeah, it's tricky, um, but it's it's definitely a, a good problem. And uh, you know, one that we're we're fortunate uh, enough to have, and uh, you know, I'm excited just to see uh, to be able to play around with a lot of different combinations uh, throughout the year, and um, and try to use this balance. And you know, it's it's just uh, it's going to be one of those things that where our, our guys need to understand we have one of the deepest teams in, in the league, and, and really in recent memory. And um, you know, I think everybody's aligned with uh, you know our group has one goal, and that's to win a championship. And uh, however, the, however our guys can fit into the uh, fit into the puzzle um, the right way, our guys are willing to do. Let's take one more, and then Kyle has a quick follow up. Uh, Maximilian, thanks for the question, head coach. Um, just wondering, after working with Ben Schroeder for a few days, how happy are you with what you've seen or not seen so far? Uh, he hasn't surprised me at all because I've, I've had high expectations, and you know he's he's been living up to it. He plays with great speed and competitive spirit. Uh, he's got a, a skill set that is uh, very dynamic in, in the modern NBA that plays with uh, offensive space, with his ability to attack off the bounce and and uh, use the speed in the open court and and with his cutting, and um, and he's tenacious on the defensive end. So uh, I'm very happy with the start that he's off to, and excited what, about what he's gonna mean to our team this year. The last thing for Kyle. And when it comes to LeBron and AD um, and the minutes they're, that they're going to get for these last two games, is that dictated by the things you've seen in practice and you're saying, OK, these guys are ready to go? Or is it just a matter of, hey, guys, we only have two preseason games left and you, you got to get out there. That's just our timeline. No, it's a, it's all a collaboration, you know. Um, you know, we meet, meet with the medical staff. Uh, they have a sort of a, a, a build-up plan of what is what is best. The coaching staff uh, meets and, and and feels out how much work they need to get integrated with new teammates and, and whatnot, and uh, feedback from the players themselves. You know, how do you feel like uh, you want to manage these four preseason games to 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 allow yourself to be ready for opening night. And um, you know, you factor in all of those uh, conversations and opinions and you land in a spot that's comfortable for everyone.